today we will start with a small experiment and therefore I need a volunteer. There I have you have one. A big applause for our volunteer. Today we will perform a live DNA isolation and we for therefore we will use uh, the cells of the inside of your mouth. So would you please wash your mouth with this water. It's a very easy experiment. You could also perform it you could also perform it at home. The only things you need are just available over the counter. All our DNA is in all our cells. We got half of our DNA from our mother and half of our DNA from our father. You can spit it back. Yes, thank you. Good. So now, part of the cells of your mouth are inside this tube. But the DNA is inside the cells, two meter in every cell. Therefore, I use some soap to destroy the outside of the cells so that the DNA will be in the solution. But DNA is suitable in water, so we can still not see it. Therefore, I add some alcohol to make it visible, and that takes a few seconds. So this is a very easy experiment, but this is not the way to perform science, because I didn't inform you about this specific experiment, and I didn't ask consent to participate in this experiment. <laughs> because now I have access to your DNA, to your DNA code, and I can do with it whatever I want. <laughs> Because who else would have access to your code? I can give the information to your healthcare insurance, or I can give the information to your employer. I can share your data with Facebook or Google, or with the government in which we can use it for forensic science. Did you want that? No. 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 <laughs> okay. So, so now, I will show the public, I will show your DNA, but after that, you will get it back, okay? Is that okay? Okay. So now, all the very small white dots into the, in this solution, in the upper part, that are really DNA molecules. They are clotted together, but this DNA, although it's a very simple method, is feasible for DNA testing. Give a big applause to our volunteer. <laughs> the development of DNA testing has gone incredibly fast. When I started my study, Biomedical Sciences, at the Leiden University in 2005, we were one of the first groups of students who started their study while the DNA code of the human was known. That project took 30 years and about $2.7 billion to know the exact code of the human DNA. This knowledge has made major impact for medicine, for biotechnology, and for other life sciences. Having access to the complete sequence is similar to having all pages of a manual. But the challenge for researchers now is to determine how to read the content of all these pages and to understand how the different parts work together. We are now able to sequence the DNA code within one week for less than a thousand dollars. And I cannot imagine what will be the situation in the next 15 years. DNA testing is a powerful tool in preventive medicine and in personalized treatment. We are now able to identify patients at high risk for getting cancer. And by knowing that, we can prevent cancer or at least diagnose it at an early as possible stage by putting these patients under surveillance. But we are also able to identify people that are at high risk for neurological disorders like Alzheimer's disease. 
And do you want to know that you have an increased risk of developing these kind of diseases for which no prevention and no treatment is possible? Might not. Because this could give severe psychological burden. But on the other hand, you might make other choices during life, like reproductive choices. Although we now have some very good applications to use these kind of techniques, there is still less that we know than that we know about the DNA code. Even as simple characteristics as the color of your eyes, of which we thought that it was simple genetics, turned out to be more complex than that. There is a very interesting interaction between nature and nurture. And every day there are more questions than answers. But that makes my job as a scientist very interesting and we will push the boundaries. But although there is so much that we not know, there is a growing business in direct-to-consumer DNA testing. And it is as easy as our experiment. You only have to send some saliva to these companies and you will get the results in a report after a few weeks. They offer all kinds of tests, from nice-to-know information to DNA dating and to know more about your heritage. But there are also tests, tests that give information on, on health-related issues. And which information do you need to make the choice if you want to know this information or not? In clinics, I need more than an hour to give information for a specific disease in relation to the family history of this patient um, at a personalized um, education level to explain them what the test is about and what the consequences might be. I cannot imagine that you can fit all this information for all these different kind of applications in a few pages. And this is the situation now. But what will be the situation in the next 15 years? Would the DNA code of every human in the Netherlands be known? Do you receive the code of a newborn baby at a USB stick directly after birth? Or would we even perform the DNA testing before conception to create a perfect baby? And if not, should we then change the DNA code in order to get that? Should we use that kind of techniques only in case of specific diseases like cancer, in which we can change the DNA code of the cells to, get the, to, to make the patient better? Or should, should we also use these techniques for very severe congenital diseases. In children which have a very poor life expectancy and very severe physical and mental disabilities? Or should we also use this for other diseases? And where should we draw the line? And more importantly, who should draw the line? Are that the scientists? Are that, is that the government? Are that the medical ethical people? Or should it be the parents? All these questions are now important. Me as a scientist, I, can, I might contribute to all the possibilities for DNA testing and DNA editing in the future. But you as a society, you should decide if everything that's possible, if we also should do that. And I hope that today I give you some tools to think about this topic and to think about the relation, what, will mean, what DNA will mean in your future. 
Just because we could doesn't mean we should. And there are all kinds of possibilities that give more problems than you could imagine. I'm as a scientist, I will push the boundaries. Because for every step I take in science, I have a patient in mind of which I think that he or she could benefit from all these new applications. But there are also possibilities with, which give more problems than you can imagine. Today, you and I, we strengthened the building bridges between science and society. Thank you.